Good evening and welcome back to CNN Money Switzerland. I'm Olivia Chang. It's time to take a quick look at all the top stories today. The Swiss National Bank says it will consider whatever is necessary to protect the Swiss economy that has been hit by coronavirus. The SMB is continuing along with its ultra-expansive monetary policy, leaving rates unchanged today. Hannah Wise has more from the press conference today in Bern and where exactly the Swiss economy is headed. Recovery is going to happen. It is already happening after a fall of about 30% economic activity in April. We're seeing a, a rebound, but the rebound is going to take time uh, and it is not going to happen very quickly. Uh, your baseline scenario assumes no second wave of coronavirus. How confident are you of that? We don't know. It's the big uncertainty, but it allows us to, to run different models. I mean, we have an adverse, we have a slightly more pessimistic, uh, uh, optimistic uh, baseline. Um, that would make everything much more difficult. So I think it's very important that authorities try their best to get a recovery, an economic recovery going, and yet try to minimize that risk. Your outlook for GDP is slightly more optimistic than SECO. It's at a contraction of minus 6% as opposed to minus 6.2%. Why is that? Look, those are just slightly different models and it's important to have different, uh, different uh, estimates. We have a slightly, but I mean, you know, one percentage point is really not much. On the other hand, we have a slightly slower recovery. So I think it's all going to depend how consumers are going to, rea to, to react, how investors are going to react, how much confidence in the system, and yet being able to live with a little bit longer of social distancing. What additional measures has the SMB considered um, if the slump continues here in Switzerland? That's an ongoing discussion internally. Um, look, we have two very good instruments at the moment. We have the negative interest rate, which plays an important part. We also have intervention, which we've intensified, uh, particularly in the last months, and we're willing to do so going forward. We've uh, uh, worked with the, uh, with the federal government, as well with the banks, to have a refinancing facility. It really depends what the economy needs. Will you consider increasing the threshold, the, the point at which um, banks um, are hit with negative interest rates at the SMB, will you consider increasing that threshold in the future? So we've increased it quite a bit. I mean, it's been our commitment to have the negative interest rate. It's a market rate. But if banks, for some reason, if we can reduce the, uh, the charge on the banks, i.e., and that would reduce the, 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 the incentive to transmit it to the uh, uh, retail depositors, and also if it gives them greater possibility to provide uh, credits to the, uh, to the uh, corporate sector, we're willing to do that. We've gone quite far. So right now we have to see how the, how the increase is settling in the system. We've seen a slight upward pressure on our interest rate. We're waiting for that to, com to come down, and we need to see how the, uh, how the economy functions. Would the SMB ever consider an asset purchase plan like the ECB is doing? So we're considering anything that we feel is really necessary for the Swiss economy. And uh, so far we do not have an asset purchase program. We do not have a credit crunch. That's really important. On the other hand, we are just similarly increasing our, the size of our balance sheet. We're doing it through uh, uh, FX interventions. Different instrument, very similar impact. The currency interventions, um, you haven't had to intervene so much of late because of the strengthening euro, because of the ECB stimulus. I mean, how much has Switzerland benefited from what's going on in Europe? So Switzerland is very dependent on what is happening to Europe. We need a strong Europe, and we've seen it going into the crisis of the corona. There was incredible pressure. It was speculative pressure on the franc. And we did, we did go into the market. We did have to intervene. But you're absolutely right. Once when the recovery started to happen, uh, there was a little bit more confident to, to bring back the lockdown. And of course, very important for Europe, this recovery fund, because it is about the trust. How much confidence is there in the future of Europe? As soon as that happens, you're right. There's much less fear and the Swiss franc becomes less in focus as a safe haven currency. What about the franc strengthening against, sorry, the, the dollar strengthening against the franc? How much of that is a concern for you? 
It is the absolutely part. When we intervene, we do not look at a particular currency part. Of course, the euro is important, but it's only one part of the bigger picture. And the dollar plays a very important role, as well as any other country with which Switzerland, for instance, has uh, very important trading ties. The drop in demand due to coronavirus and the pandemic has led to negative inflation here in Switzerland. How much of a concern is that for you? It is a concern. Um, inflation is, is our responsibility. Our mandate is to maintain price stability. Now you also have to do something that makes sense. And right now the shock has been tremendous. There has been a lot of uh, response internationally as well as in Switzerland. What, what is important for us is not the inflation today. It's about the inflation over time. Inflation is something that moves slowly. Any monetary policy instrument takes time to get through the system. Right Right now, we do see, based on, on, on our models, that inflation would come back by the end of our three-year horizon, which is what we need. And we also need to make sure that the, that the long-term inflation expectations are anchored, and this is the case. The Swiss government wants to use the money that the SNB has made through negative interest rates to bolster the, the pension system, which is suffering at the moment. What's your reaction to the latest developments whereby uh, a lot of the Swiss parliament voted in favour of this move? So we don't comment on political initiatives, and that's very important. But I would say that we have a very clear distribution role. What, how do we use benefits, profits from our, um, our, our balance sheet, and how does it go to the government, a third to the government, and two third to the cantons? And that's a very good rule. It works because of two things. It's based on how much capital, own capital we have. It's a reserve for future distribution. And because what is important is it should not restrict our uh, room for maneuver for monetary policy. The other thing that is very helpful in that very clear rule is it is not up to us to decide how that money is ultimately used in the political sphere. So for us, as long as it's a matter of distribution, there's a very good framework. We've increased the framework, we've enlarged it because our reserve for future distribution has uh, become bigger. And then it's really a political decision how Switzerland wants to use these additional distributions. Swatch Group, meanwhile, is reshuffling its executive leadership as well as some of its watch brands. As of July 1st, Tissot, Longines and Radeau, to name a few, will have a new face at the helm as some move to the board while others retire. Swiss watch exports have plummeted from coronavirus, diving nearly 68% in May. That's according to the latest industry figures. Since the start of the year, exports, meanwhile, have fallen more than 35%. The Boston Consulting Group has released its 2020 Wealth Management Report. Consolidation is sweeping across the industry in Switzerland, and they warn that more Swiss private banks could be dropping out of the space, even if the economy recovers quickly from the COVID-19 crisis. Hannah Wise has more on that. Um, your report also mentions uh, there's more wealth in more hands nowadays um, and that the gap between mature and growth markets is narrowing but there is still uh, a lot of inequality there is still a wealth gap especially in the United States how do you see that developing? Okay. The what we're going to see in the future is definitely that the whole pool of clients will change and we will talk about a very different pool uh, that wealth managers have to step up in order to be able to serve so we will actually have clients from a different generation, X, Y, and Z. You know, that's already shifting. Secondly, we have an increase in growth of the affluent segment. Alone in the US, we're talking about 52 million affluent clients. In Europe, we're talking about 15 million affluent clients. And it is quite a strong growth pool that many wealth managers can and could tap into, but they haven't really done that yet. Thirdly, in terms of the the wealth, I think it will also become a lot more diverse. Already today, we have 32% of the total global wealth in the hands of women and controlled by women. And that part of wealth is also growing faster than uh, the average wealth and the share of wealth held by men. So I really believe there will be a disruption, not just in terms of the different wealth bands, but especially in terms of the mix of what clients we will see in the future. What about the focus, the increasing focus on racial diversity as well? So the way we look at that is that financial institutions are really uniquely well positioned to act on that. And it's really about breaking the cycle of racial inequality and wealth. You know, closing the wealth gap demands a radical disruption 
on also how, how wealth managers and how, how banks really will prioritize, target, and also invest in, uh, in, uh, in diverse consumers. So it can be about you know, developing strategies to better attract and serve the next generation of black investors, but it can also be in terms of innovation and providing investment and advisory solution very clearly to boost that wealth and also to boost equality. So there are multiple angles in which you can really break that cycle. When it comes to the coming 20 years, a lot we've looked back at the last 20 years, but in the next 20 years, um, there's going to be a lot of consolidation, whether it's in a quick recovery situation or a, a longer lasting uh, recovery situation from the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, do you think that we'll start to see more M&A? And if so, where? So we expect um, a large scale consolidation to happen not just by small banks, but also in terms of, you know, other players focusing um, their activities by being more structural and more efficient and reducing complexity. So if, if I may just continue with Switzerland, you know, we, we used to have 185 private banks. At the moment, we are about at 125. Um, and we, I would actually expect that over the next four or five years, if I just look at what happened in the last financial crisis, we could end up with a hundred. And with all the, the, the troubles that um, wealth managers are facing, um, the squeeze on profits as well, um, to a varying degree, because they have more asset-based fee structures, they actually went into the coronavirus crisis slightly weaker than they did any other crisis. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are various drivers for that. And, um, and that kind of also brings me to, to a couple of the things we mentioned in the report. And for us, it's also what are the priorities a wealth management CEO needs to address today because exactly of the weaker, weaker situation. They have, of course, in the past addressed the structural inefficiencies. They have, of course, in the past worked on protecting their top line. But it's been kind of scratching the surface and not really rethinking the operating model. Um, so, so we actually believe that there is quite a big gap to close in order to, to really protect the bottom line. And at the same time, most of the efforts go into that topic specifically, and there is very little capacity left to think about, you know, what it takes to win in the future. And if they will not focus and start focusing on that today, but only a few years down the road, it will be really hard to differentiate and it will be really hard to adapt your value proposition towards the clients. And also, if you don't, then you're facing the, the rise of big tech and their advances in wealth tech. Definitely. And we already see that happening in Asia. And I think if you look at the complete landscape in, in, in the future, I think there are, there are three things that, that we find very, very interesting and that will be shaping it. I think the first one is around the clients because clients will not want more. They will want better. And delivering better is, is something that, that you have to really rethink what it means. Secondly, the whole value proposition today of wealth managers actually will become a commodity in the future. So what is it that will create value and what is it that will make them stand out? And thirdly, if you already look at big techs, at other entrants, asset management players trying to tap into the wealth management space, I believe that there will be a shift in the competitive landscape quite clearly. And uh, the big techs already bring the capabilities that wealth managers have to catch up on. Access what? to multiple clients, scalability, and data and analytics. Switzerland's Syngenta is joining up with the agricultural arm of Sinochem and Adama to form the Syngenta Group. The tie-up makes it one of the world's leading players when it comes to crop protection, fertilizers, as well as seeds. According to AWP, an IPO is in the works for a listing by 2022. The new group will be based out of Basel, Switzerland, employing about 48,000 people worldwide. 11,000 lucky German tourists are in the Spanish island of Mallorca testing a pilot program for holiday travel during COVID-19 times. From temperature testing before every meal to constant cleaning, the measures want to ensure that Spain can offer a safe and enjoyable holiday experience. Now CNN's Attica Schubert takes a look at this new way to have fun in the sun. This is a test, a safety test, because even if we take a holiday, coronavirus does not. 
So to test virus safety precautions, the Balearic Islands in Spain have offered nearly 11,000 lucky German tourists the first summer holiday places here. Director of Tourism, Rosana Morillo, explains. We didn't know what was going to be the reaction of the German market uh, to a pilot program that consists in opening everything uh, earlier, you know. So uh, uh, we were really hoping that the German market was still trusting the Balearic Islands. And in fact, it has been like that because everything was almost sell out uh, in the first days. The Rio hotels are working overtime to assure the safety of their new guests with a plethora of disinfectant stations. A thermal camera checks temperatures at the door, and arrows on the floor remind guests to move in a single file two meters apart. Now, if I'm going to have breakfast or dinner, it means I've got to wear my gloves, Hola. mask, <laughs> and have my temperature checked. Thank you. Then I am ready to eat. The hotel is operating at a maximum of half capacity. That's not ideal, but necessary to ensure safety and still survive the economic impact of the pandemic says hotel director Sergio Navarro. And they're always going to see us as an example, a positive example. We, we, we feel very brave to show the world our product and people are doing fantastic efforts so far and guests are, going, are responding so well. COVID-19 vigilance has not put a damper on the sunny holiday vibes. No fighting over beach towels here. Normally the beach is full, the shops are full, everything is full and now nobody is there. How do you feel about all of these new precautions? It's a little bit complicated. The mask and the hand wash, I don't know, everything is okay. As in Germany, we have all the same. After three long months of homebound coronavirus restrictions, it seems masks and disinfectant are a small price to pay for a proper beach holiday. Atika Schubert, CNN, Mallorca, Spain. Remember, you can catch up with any of our content simply by heading over to cnnmoney.ch. In the meantime, take care and we will see you very shortly. Good evening.